So I um, joined The Guardian, uh, I think it was March 2013, um, and I joined up as an environment blogger. So at the time, they were hiring something like, I think there were 10 uh, bloggers in, on, for the environment site that they were hiring. Um, and uh, it was a really good gig because I had um, freedom to pretty much write what I wanted um, and I could publish straight to the website. So with, without any editorial uh, kind of intermediary. Um, and obviously that was, you know, we went through a training process and everything. So it was great, you know, and, and we had a good working relationship. So I was um, commissioned to write about um, on the theme that I've been writing about and, and, and making films about the crisis of civilization. So I used, to, I used to write about the geopolitics of um, environmental energy and economic crises and how they all fit together. So, you know, I was doing stuff on what was, you know, conflict in Syria, um, the Arab Spring, um, other, you know, the rise of ISIS and things like that, and talking about how, you know, even, even the war in Ukraine, um, and talking about how these different conflicts, um, you know, they've actually got these underlying systemic issues like climate change, like the economy, like energy, which are driving the conflict from behind. Obviously not the only things, but those were things that I felt were being underreported. So I did a lot of that. So then obviously um, at the time, you know, Operation Protective Edge uh, had just kicked off in Gaza uh, uh, by the Israeli government. Um, so I wrote a piece about um, Isra uh, Israel's interests in Gaza's uh, untapped offshore gas resources. Um, and this article was, was um, based on um, the statements that had been made by uh, Moshe Alon, who was the Israeli defense, is the Israeli defense minister, the statements that he had made about um, the role of military intervention in eliminating obstacles to Israel drilling in Gaza, uh, namely the existence of Hamas and so on and so forth. So again, not wanting to reduce the conflict solely to those things, but this was uh, for me a very uh, underreported angle. So I wrote my article. The article quickly went viral. Um, I mean, the last time I checked, it was about 80,000 shares, I think, on Facebook, which is pretty good. Um, but I, uh, I, got, I posted the article up, and then the next day I got a call from um, one of my editors, James Randerson, um, who's a senior editor at The Guardian, and he's been at the environment section for a while. And he just said to me, Nafiz, I'm sorry, but um, this is not an environment story, and um, you're going to have to cancel your blog. And I was just completely, I mean, I was, I was just floored. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Um, it, was, it wasn't even like, it was, I said to him, like, look, can, we, can I come into the office and, and we can talk about this? No, we can't come into the office. Um, you, know, can't, can, you know, why don't you give me some guidelines, you know, and I'm happy to kind of, you know, no, sorry. There was no conversation, no discussion, it was just like gone. So that was quite a shock for me. Um, and it obviously was the beginning of a journey. Um, you know, I don't, I've always been quite independent. Um, but I think from there, there was really, a, for me, it was a question of really how do I continue to reach a mass audience, um, but maintain my own integrity um, and, and, and also have some kind of meaningful editorial control over what I'm writing. You know, how do I do that? So, I mean, in the end, that, that journey led me into exploring new models like crowdfunding um, and uh, other ways of kind of getting the, getting the